Buildings and volunteers came to the rescue for Zheng Zhushou's family with a two-day house renovation. A sports medicine center was established in Hualien City Hospital in 2018, helping professional athletes with their injuries. Welcome to Diet Headlines, I'm Joyce Hao, thank you for joining us on Boxing Day. In Fujian, China, a Tzu Care recipient, Zheng Zhushou, and his family just moved back to their old home, which does not have a restroom. Tzu volunteers gathered professional builders and manpower to build a bathroom and replace the roof, all in just two days. They're willing to do work that requires manual labor. He has mobility issues because he suffered a stroke. His house does not have a restroom. As a result, late at night, he has to walk thousands of meters to use the public restroom. It is very inconvenient. On rainy days, the roads are slippery and he could fall easily. We want to solve his problems at home. Today, we have come to do two things. First, we want to help him build a bathroom outdoors. Secondly, since there is a canopy near the staircase that connects first and second floor, on rainy days, the canopy leaks. So, we want to change the canopy to glass bricks. Suzy Brothers will ensure it does not leak and light can shine through. In the past, I carry water with a basin and wipe my body. If they build the bathroom, my problems would be solved. For instance, I no longer need to go far away to use the restroom. In the future, I can open the door and solve my problem. If there is a strong typhoon, we will still be safe. Working long hours efficiently, volunteers have helped the care recipient live with more convenience. In Fujian, Liancheng County, many villages are situated in the mountains. To ensure the care recipient families have enough clothes and food for the winter, to do volunteers visited the, with gifts to prepare the families for the cold. Although the drive to the villages are tiring, but upon arriving at Bingkong village, volunteers are energetic. Because winter is here, we wanted to bring care to you, wear more clothes and have a happy new year. In the cold mountainous areas, volunteers have brought supplies for the winter. The act of kindness makes Granny Huang felt warm. <laughs> Our master told us that we have to bring the best to you. Since you live in the cold mountains, we cannot let you suffer from the low temperatures. After collecting the winter supplies and blessings from volunteers, Granny Huang and her husband are very happy. There is so much stuff. Even if I have money, I don't think I am able to purchase them. Today is the happiest day of my life. Carrying on the happiness from Granny Huang, volunteers came to Yu household. The owner has been relying on a wheelchair for six years, until the day volunteers visited him. Only was he able to step up from his house. He was on a wheelchair for years, and after six years, he finally came out to see the world. Seeing his happy face made me happy too, and it made our journey worth it. The trip to the villages and the supplies given to villagers aren't just material goods, but inspiring a feeling of warmth. To ensure students from all the needy families are able to receive financial aid during the pandemic, Malaysia Tzu volunteers are committed to visit all students that have applied for the Tzu scholarship, whether in person or by video conferencing. 
有。没有啦。乔恩跟弟弟有补习吗？没有。没有补习吗？Through video calls, Tsuji volunteers are getting to know the family situation of their potential scholarship students, as during the pandemic, they are unable to visit everyone. I think it's convenient, especially since the pandemic is in a critical place right now. This is the safest and fattest. It also solves our problems. While upholding pandemic safety measures, volunteers visit some of the students at home to get a closer look at the situation. Better to visit them at home, we can get a better picture of their case. Due to the pandemic, many more families are suffering financially. Take Pointian alone, the volunteers received 196 applications for new shoot scholarships this year. My younger sister is still in school, and my father can't work. One of my brothers had a motorcycle accident and needs surgery on his leg, while one of my other brothers was working in a supermarket, but he hasn't had a shift in three months. With the end of the pandemic uncertain, volunteers continue to help the impoverished, so they may continue with their education without worry. Right before Christmas, Sunni Tsuji volunteers organized a free hair salon for the homeless people to help them refresh their looks and energy to welcome the new year. This man came in with hair to his shoulders, looking tired and discouraged. 30 minutes later, he has a new haircut and looks so much happier and younger. Karen, who is currently studying in Sydney, has worked as a barber in Shanghai for over 20 years. She makes good use of her skills to help those in need. I had a good haircut and it was free. So it's very, very kind. At the a new fresh start. Yes, and I'm 81 in January. So wow. I hope it doesn't grow much before then, you know, I want to still look nice. Just before Christmas, Siji volunteers organized a free haircut event for homeless people in the Dundas community at Parramatta Mission. Karen has taken the initiative to volunteer. I can really feel it, that they're so happy after getting new hairstyles. Uh, sparkling, so that's really, really good. And as I said, it, means it may be a small thing, but for a lot of people it's a big thing to look good. Volunteers cut away worries and sorrows, hoping that the new year will be better. Volunteers also prepared several delicious vegetarian dishes, spreading love and constant smiles in this season of gratitude. A team of hairdressing volunteers has been visiting Yunling Special Education School regularly for the past 15 years. Every month, the volunteers help cut the children's hair with love and patience. In the large hall, the hairdressing designers line up on both sides, getting ready to start. There were many students from special schools. This little boy did not like to have his hair cut, so he cried to protest. The volunteers continued to cause the reluctant child with patience, easing his emotion as his top hair continued to be trimmed. This child always turned his head uncontrollably. Volunteers squatted in front of him to distract him. Another volunteer pushed this little boy in a good mood forward to share his new hairstyle. Serving special education students is not a simple task. Apart from being professional, it is also necessary to be patient. The hairdressers have been coming here once a month to provide free haircuts for 15 years. I have been joining this free haircut for 15 years already. I've been doing hairdressing for more than 10 years and joined this free haircut for 5 years. These sisters are coming here with me to serve. I am really touched. 2020 is about to come to an end. A Thanksgiving tea party was held after the free haircut. The principal of National Yunlin Special Education School issued a certificate of appreciation to Cixi volunteers. 15 years is a long time. 
Thank you, TG volunteers, for their help for such a long time. The Certificate of Appreciation represents 15 years of persistence from TG volunteers serving with love. Hualian Yuli Sanming Junior High School has a star baseball team led by coach Zhang Zhiqiang. Although injuries are unavoidable during practices, Hualian City Hospital has a team of sports medicine specialists to look after these young athletes. Still having good control of the baseball's former Uni Lions pitcher Zhang Zhiqiang chose to retire from baseball in 2015 at the age of 36 years old. However, his retirement from professional sports did not mean he would give up his baseball career. He's now at Hualien Yuli Sanming Junior High School as he cultivates the school baseball team. During this rebellious youth period, it is important to give them more time and care or more of a sense of accomplishment. This lets indigenous youths know that it's not just a baseball team, but actually a sort of second home for them. This creates a more welcoming or warm feeling. Despite being located in a remote township as well as funded constraints, it took less than three years for Zhang to make Sanming baseball team the top team in Hualien County. The team was also the runner-up in the Youth Asian Baseball Championship. Young players love baseball and practice hard every morning and evening. However, sports injuries are unavoidable. The drawback is that sports medicine is not popular in the Hualien and Taidong area. When an injury occurs, they have to travel long distances for medical treatment. Local doctors here actually treat the players like ordinary people rather than as athletes. So I always choose to send my team in Kaohsiung. There are more professional doctors to take care of our team. A lot of times, we go to other hospitals to get to know the orthopedic doctor and rehabilitation doctor. Sports medicine physicians are like family physicians for many athletes. In late 2018, Zhang finally witnessed a solution for problems which long plagued him. The Hualien Ziji Medical Center established Hualien Taidong's first sports medicine center, integrating Chinese and Western medical teams such as orthopedics, rehabilitation, and traditional Chinese medicine as they tailored nutrition and exercise programs for professional athletes. For Samin Junior High School, TCM doctors visit every two weeks. While the NCG Medical Center TCM physician Shen Xuan Xu has a background in physical therapy specializing in sports injury treatment, has assisted many sports teams and competitions. The shoulder, elbow, waist are places that are most commonly injured. In fact, the injury has probably already occurred and there is some medical evidence of it. It can be due to exercise and in fact, the most important thing is simply relaxing this area as part of the treatment. During night training, when running and turning, and especially when bending down, I feel very uncomfortable. I've seen another doctor before, and it was about the same as it did not get better. To guard the health of these young athletes, Zhang Zhiqiang frankly says that he was skeptical at physical therapy at first. It's not until he saw Dr. Sen assisting in the treatment of sports injuries that he deeply felt that Dr. Sen was really good at these types of injuries. Athletes are not like ordinary people. They need greater strength, greater angles, or even a stronger body. The average doctor only treats them like an ordinary person who simply want a better quantity of life, but this is not what athletes need. The athletes are involved in high-intensity competition. In fact, it's necessary for them to be able to play right after recovery. If it is an acute sprain, recovery time will be shorter. Chronic problems will take more time. But I think the most important thing is to know why they have actually encountered such a problem. If you train your body well in junior high school, you'll be able to achieve good results in life and have more chances to become a professional athlete. However, junior high school is also the golden period of growth and development for young people. Baseball coach Zhang Zhiqiang is also worried about the overall development of his players. In our next episode of The Report, a TCM doctor will talk about how to let children make the most of the time when their bones are developing. 
Iron is the fourth most deficient nutrient for people in Taiwan. For females between 19 and 44, one in every seven women has an adequate iron levels. Many in Taiwan says that having red bean soup will replenish iron. Is this true? Let's ask an expert. Iron is a necessary nutrition to a human body. Female adults are suggested to consume 15 grams a day, and male adults are suggested with 10 grams a day. Normally, one would drink red bean soup to replenish iron. Before and after my period, I will drink red bean soup. It improves my health a bit. The red bean soup is stewed, and with some sugar it tastes fine. Do expert nutritionists think that red beans are necessary in replenishing iron? Actually, red beans are a great source of iron, but be careful the iron is sourced from plants, so it's harder for human bodies to consume such elements. So we recommend consuming foods with vitamin C, increasing the consumption rate of iron. Red beans belong to the category of starch, therefore it's not ideal to overconsume it. Drinking red bean soup as a method to prevent obesity also won't achieve the effect of iron consumption. Therefore, nutritionists suggested that one may consume dark green vegetables in order to replenish iron. Basically, vegetables have the most iron, with the Chinese spinach containing the most, and then celery, hong feng cai, and lettuce. These dark green vegetables have plenty of iron in it. Eating foods with iron may achieve the effect of enriching the blood, but the reasons of lacking iron are plenty. Therefore, if one has a long-term history of anemia, they are suggested to immediately seek treatment in order to find out what's wrong. In Jilong, Anle District, Zhen Ti Temple's Dama Master Si Xuan has been sorting recyclables for over 10 years. Zhen volunteers collect the recyclables regularly from Zhen Ti Temple, helping Master Si Xuan to keep our Earth a clean planet and pass on her blessings to more people. The recycling truck drives backwards downhill into Zhen Ti Temple as the volunteers received a call from the Abbot Master that there are recyclables for pickup. The abbot's master does it all on her own. She would take the fruit cartons left from the temple offerings and would sort it for recycling. She has also spent money on a steel cage to place the recyclables inside for us. This abbot master has been saving her recyclables for Siji for 10 years, all because when she was young, she got sick and someone helped her. So now she wants to give back to society. I saw we had a lot of cartons, and I saw Cici volunteer Zhang Shu Zi and asked him if Cici took them, and he said yes. I said, oh, good. When I have organized them, I'll ask you to come pick them up. As Jun Ti Temple is located near a mountain edge, driving a recycling truck there is a challenge. Many times the volunteers just relay the recyclables to the truck from the temple by foot. But now with Zhen Zheng Huang's driving skills, they are able to get closer and has saved them a lot of energy. Zhen Ti's temple's Dharma master is very mindful. She keeps her recyclables better than we do. She organizes it very neatly and ties it up in bundles so it's easy for us to collect it. It doesn't fall apart and we don't have to double check it. We usually just pick it up and go. Retired security guard Lu Huiqi is also a good helper on this trip. This recycling lesson is something everyone should learn. Even the Dharma masters are doing them in temples. Since this is a place where we receive our spiritual education, we should support it even more. Junti Temple protects the planet, and the volunteers are there to help fulfill its wish. In September this year, Suzhou Xingxu Elementary School worked with Ciji to establish a recycling education station on campus. Three months onwards, recycling promotion is no longer only a learning session, but something the teachers are doing and leading by example. Recycling bins are placed in the corner of the classroom to help students categorize their recyclables and waste. Not using it is best. Start with reduced usage, then not using. When your class do not use one plastic bottle, then you will be the best class. In this school, this environmentally friendly campaign was started by teacher Qian Jianwen. They said, as teachers, you can influence more people. It's those words that I've kept in mind as I began to educate students about recycling. As of September of this year, Xinxu School partnered up with Ciji to establish a recycling education station. Thus, many of the teachers contribute their efforts to the cause. When recycling day is here, not only the students line up with recyclables, but the teachers are there to help. 
Treasury Resources has also helped change the students' daily habits for the better. When washing hands with a heavy faucet flow, they will say to use only a chopstick thin stream. Or if they see trash on the ground, they will pick it up. In the beginning, carry out actions was difficult because some students don't know how to characterize, but lately, this demonstration has been good. With the teachers in the lead, the students have a good role model to follow in loving the planet with firm actions. Thailand is heading into an aging society in the year 2021. To sustain a happy and healthy lifestyle, Tsuji senior volunteers has been enjoying giving their time for good causes and keeping a lively spirit. Reports from the Thailand Government and Social Development Office estimates that in 2021, 20% of the Thailand population will be those who are over 60 years old, which is equivalent to about 13 million people, pushing Thailand into an aging society. For the elderly during their aging process, changes to their physical health, mental health and societal views might cause some anxiety. So it's important to be informed and prepare for these changes. Those currently entering the 60s are, I believe, a part of what is called healthy aging. They can still take care of themselves, so it's important for them to live each day with meaning so they can express their life's values. Many of the elderly have activities they can choose to do during their spare time, including traveling, meditation, or exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Something else the elderly can do is to volunteer their time, as giving back to society is something that is not limited to age. Mental health also affects physical health. Wherever I can go to do good deeds, I will go help. I can get some exercise in, and it makes me happy. In 2009, even though she was well into her 70s, Kanlaya Botawane still joined the ranks of Tsuji volunteers, seizing her opportunity. I'm so moved by Tsuji and so glad I am one of them now. I help out at the hospital to serve tea, or to help with home visits. When someone is in trouble, we go help them. This year, Botawane is 86 and she's still very physically healthy. She participates in all volunteer work that she can and continues to collect donations from her members. Though the granny is older, she is still very active. Seeing her doing things with joy in life, we also want to connect with her. She's our bridge to charity. <laughs> I'm happy and feel honored to be a part of Tsuji. I'm fortunate I can learn a lot in Tsuji. In the past 12 years, Bota Wadnit has been walking the Bodhisattva path, and she is a living example that even if you are older, you can still contribute to society and also elevate one's own meaning in life. In the golden years, you can still enjoy a life of giving and living days with happiness and meaning. We will leave you with these images and see you next time.